Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Charmed. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, I like how we open this up with, like, you know, Macy trying to break things up with Julian, and obviously, like, uh, Mel and Maggie kind of being, like, her, like, uh like testing it out and it's like ah oh, no you kind of you know you're not you're breaking up with someone so less compliments and stuff because you're not you know you're not proposing anything like that so obviously they're like no you can do this because obviously for her it's like you know it's like oh is it because of, you know because of potentially because of how you feel about Harry which obviously for Macy it's like I'm still trying to figure out how I feel so she wants to go and try and break up with Julian but that doesn't work out because, you know, uh, you know, simply because, well, timing and everything, especially considering the fact is that um, Jordan contacts Maggie. They they get him. He breaks down everything that went down. They end up tracking down the car and it's like, oh, it belongs to the Shea Company. So it's like Julian's potentially involved. And obviously Maggie has to, I mean, uh, Macy has to pretend like everything is OK. And it's like, holy crap. She's like, how could I not see uh, Julian for what he really was, but then the big thing of like, well, the fact of the matter is just, we know that the Che company's involved, but it doesn't mean necessarily that he's involved, but for Macy, it's like, there's nothing that doesn't go down in that company that he's not aware of, so he's got to have his hands, I mean, that was a big, you know, question I had beforehand, we know his aunt's involved, but we don't know how much Julian's involved, and maybe he's only involved on a surface level, maybe he's not involved at all, or maybe he's deeply involved, whatever the case may be, uh, they've got a, um, find Harry and obviously Maggie tries using something of Julian's the necklace to like get a vision nothing works try to use something of Harry's doesn't work and I thought it was kind of interesting because Jordan was suggesting why don't you try both and luckily because of that they found out where he was that it would be at you know under like in the you know facility at the shade facility but it's like well getting there won't be the easiest thing well they to get in there they also need to um to get it done, they would have to uh, go to the party, that the charity event that's being held that Julian invited Macy to. So, um, And I like that conversation between Macy and Maggie because for Macy, it's like the fact of the matter is I should, like I said, seen Julian for what he was. You know, Maggie's like, it's not kind of, you know, anyone in your situation would, you know, anyone would have been in that situation. And she's like, that doesn't happen to me. And then Maggie was like, oh, yeah, you're not like, you know, you don't kind of, you're not an empath who basically kind of wears her heart on her sleeve. And which obviously for Macy, she's like, I didn't mean it like that. Sadly, Macy kind of meant it in almost in a sadder way because for her, she's a very calculated person. So she kind of thinks more of her head that her heart works Maggie's literally the opposite she thinks more of her heart than her head which is never a bad thing it's just like you know it's just how people are sometimes like people think with different things you know and her you know and it's something you know Macy ends up talking about later on but it, that's kind of her defense mechanism but for her it's just kind of like I'm very logical I should have you know I, I let my heart sway me but Macy was like I mean uh but Maggie was like Macy like your heart being your guy like letting your heart kind of talk for you isn't always a bad thing don't kind of treat it like it is one obviously and i love that jordan's up there nerding out like oh man this magic stuff it's so cool it's like oh this what's this oh, yeah that's a cloning that uh they use to steal your rings it's like okay cool and he's just looking at me he's like dude it's got to be so dope because i feel even with the whole um with the whole galvin situation um even he never really i feel like really got to see like all the cool fun magic side of magic so it's like it's interesting to see jordan kind of have that perspective like oh this is actually pretty dope um him and uh Nevertheless, uh, when it was all said and done, the spell uh, Mel's trying to make, uh, it, she needs help doing it. And lo and behold, has to turn to the one person um, you don't want to turn to, but have to under these circumstances. Since it's Abigail, she shows up with a whole bunch of bags. I was like, you're moving in, aren't you? I was like, that's interesting. And I love Macy being like, this is literally my nightmare. Which, to be fair, because of last episode, we know that this is literally your nightmare. At least part of your literal nightmare. And so it is interesting to see it actually come to fruition of like, you're living here? No, 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 no. But obviously, they need her. I know I even love her being like, oh, it's like... Uh, Jordan's asking, like, oh, how is, like, this going to help or something? And she calls him Jordy. I'm like, I love that you're giving everyone, like, nicknames and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, yeah, you let me stay or I won't help you. I can be useful, you know, helping with the potions and stuff like that. Because basically she hands him a handbag that basically acts as a magical portal. So you drop one, an item into one bag, it pops up in the other one. I was like, that's pretty badass. So obviously Mel and Abigail stay behind while uh, Maggie... 
Macy and Jordan go to the party. Um, interestingly enough, uh, with the whole uh, situation, I, I like the back and forth between Abigail and Mel because they, they butt, once again, they butt heads, I feel like, the most. But the fact is that, you know, Mel is talking about the fact is that, you know, um, Abigail doesn't have to kind of give into her demons. I was like, why do you choose the demons so much? The fact of the matter is you could do so much good with your witch side, which obviously Abigail kind of like, oh yeah, I can uh, save kittens under the tree and stuff like that. Do I'll do the goody two-shoe type of stuff. It's like, but it's like, she seems so adverse to which even Mel's like, every time I think that, hey, you're a decent person, you just kind of turn around and just kind of make it seem like you're not. Well, when the time came and they needed to like find the magic finder to make it easier to find Harry, um, they go back to her place because that's the only place it is, but it's overrun with demons. So, and she comes back, Abigail's looking at her place. It's a wreck and it's just like, come on. She's like, I love a good party, but come on, this is, this is nonsense. And so the fact is, uh, basically we end up finding out like the reason why she turned to her demon side is like, yeah, demons are this. They can't be trustworthy, but at least they're upfront with who they are. They don't kind of hide behind pretenses. Her mom basically, you know, shunned her at every chance it'd be like yeah her mom pushed the whole witch side of her so hard to be like oh trying to compensate for the fact it's like oh forget that demon side like it's almost like her mom shamed her for being half of what she is you know so it's a whole situation of like her mom almost made her never forget like made her feel bad about being like something she can't control feel bad for being half demon and so it's like you know her mom kind of shunned her away and stuff like that i mean we don't know the full scope of their relationship but they're like her mom pushed the whole witch side over just to kind of be like oh we don't ugh, let's not even acknowledge that filthy disgusting demon side of it, you know so sadly that's a thing so but it's like she's like well unlike you male we can't all have perfect moms which Mel ends up explaining later on like I'm sorry I didn't know that stuff about your mom but my mom wasn't perfect we're just like yeah her mom lied I had an affair I mean also like you don't see well they were scared at first but they always I mean the fact is that deep unlike you like you know, your family, like, obviously, like, they accepted Macy with her demon side and everything when that came out of, like, what she is, you know, I mean, that's their their sister who was dead and brought back to life, so it, it's, they have a complicated family situation, but it's like, and even um, Abigail being like, oh, I guess we have more in common than I thought, you know, her, and once again, that's why I'm like, dude, that's an interesting uh, situation if they end up becoming, like, a, like, last episode, like I said, there was a line that she said and made me think, like, was that her flirting with Mel? But it, probably not. I mean, even if there was some, oh, cool, but if not, like, it's just interesting too that they would become friends which is interesting too because that whole nightmare that macy had about her uh abigail being one of the charmed ones and it's like oh she might not be one of the charmed ones but maybe she's not allied to the charmed ones and maybe that uh, turns the tides in some shape or form of like what it looks like going forward for the squad i don't know but um it was just kind of an interesting development I love that she basically used like a blinding spell to blind some demons as they left. And I love that she's looking like, oh my God, because they literally threw axes into her wall. She's like, come on, why are they ruining this place? And it's like, oh, that spell came in handy. She's like, yeah, I used to use it to prank my mom on her time. And then like Mace, uh, Mel is like, oh, that's, that's, that's uh, dark. Um, but nevertheless, uh, the whole uh, party situation, I, I love the whole like switching of voices. Like when uh, Macy ends up getting Jordan's voice. Uh, and using that to get around. I even love that uh, uh, wallflower spell of like her kind of blending into the wall. And it's just, I just aesthetically, I like how that look. Um, but also her having to lie to Jordan and be like, oh, I'm thinking, yeah, I got these. Oh, what was I think the chronic migraines or something, I think is what she was saying. I wonder what's that true. I mean, I know she's making up excuses, but she probably played a little to truth. Maybe, maybe not, whatever the case may be. But what was really insightful is we finally got an understanding about Jordan. I figured. Jordan would have some kind of connection to this magic world. And this kind of, once again, answers the question of like, okay, so basically he had a sister who was flown out of the car, but then like during, after the accident and he's looking and he sees this dude pop out of nowhere. He heals these two other ladies and then disappears. It was a white lighter and he didn't save the girl, like he didn't save uh, Julian's sister so that's kind of what sparked all of this because it's like he's a scientist so for him it's like I'm trying to understand what I saw I know what I saw and he's like those experiments downstairs have to do with that so, but that still begs the question he might be connected to it on a like a more like um topical like not what was what was the word I'm looking for um he, he might only be into, interested in trying to understand magic and stuff like that. Like, he probably doesn't know what his aunt is fully up to. He might not know the depths of what the faction is up to. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Because the faction could easily just be 
her thing that maybe she's a member of or maybe she's the one that started. I mean, she's the head honcho of it. You know, there are like investors from the outside kind of trying to get in. So like that's the thing of like the fact is that he's not the one having those conversations with those people makes me think like she handles the poor, I guess, the more money side of this whole thing. But I guess that kind of maybe she like I said, because I felt like this was her like whatever happened to um, Julian's parents. I figured she would be like. Uh, that'd be her personal vendetta against magic but I, like I said I wasn't sure where Julian stood with the whole thing but it's it's sad because the thing is what do white lighters do they they protect other people before they're like they put their charges before everyone else that's kind of because that's their sole duty and this is all like it, I mean it depends on what white lighter we're dealing with if this was Harry I believe Harry would have healed that little girl too but it, it's just like it's like I have my job of like I need to protect these white uh, witches that's about it I'm, I'm curious to find out who those witches were like are they going to end up being so insignificant? Maybe, maybe not. But, uh, well, who knows? Because I was about to say, not let's go, because I can't, I can't forget, like, in this universe, elders are witches. So those could have been elders for all we know. We don't know the full scale of the accident, what exactly went down. But maybe that's something we kind of get more instances of in the future. But uh, nevertheless. So I love that the whole thing is like, all right, so we're going to need someone else's voice. We're going to need Vivian's voice because it might answer, you know, all this of like how we get around. Uh, because Macy, I mean, not Macy, but Maggie, I keep doing that all. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sure if this was the original Charmed, I'd still be doing that too. Just because of, oh, you know, the P names in the, uh, the original series and all the M names in this. But nevertheless, they're suggesting that like, Jordan will have to kiss uh Vivian to get her voice and everything and obviously it's like he doesn't want to do it because it would involve kissing her in front of obviously the woman that he likes Maggie so I think there's that complication but also it's a whole thing of like yeah that would also mean I'd have to kiss a complete stranger and that's like how do you know because you know that's not going to be something you can do um but he found a workaround because it's like all you need is a transfer saliva so he just drink from her glass um, and it's just that weird thing of he comes over there talking with her voice and it's just he, he kind of touching his throat because it's like, oh, that's so weird. Uh, and nevertheless, I even love like when it started wearing off, he was like, oh, he's like, oh, that that's weird. Uh, but they made their way in and um, they found Harry and it's like, OK, so how do we get him out of here? They try to, but um, it activates the machine and ends up sacrificing the two monsters because one of them was a banshee and the other one's another Uh I'm sure there's other reasons, but part of me thinks like, I mean, I'm sure they're going to pull from all different types of supernatural creatures, but it's just immediately seeing the Banshee and stuff like that makes me think of the original show because Banshees played a big role in it because at one point in time, Phoebe became a Banshee. Uh, but like I said, tangents and all that stuff. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, do they pull pull that in particular just because of the whole original show or is that just because, hey, it's a supernatural creature, you know, that of course we'll use because it exists in mythology and stuff like you know that's i always wonder about stuff like that but nevertheless the machine starts going off and it's killing all those creatures and it gets to harry and obviously macy has an idea but she's worried about like the repercussions of it but you know uh maggie was like just trust your gut on it and so basically she uses her powers to kind of like basically moved she basically moves it too because i was curious to see like what she does because i think the whole point was like try and depressurize depressurize it because if she didn't it basically explode um and i love they text uh mel and it's like oh heads up catch and she's like what and then like the capsule comes flying in and luckily um abigail was able to stop it she's like nice catch and she's like yeah uh luckily they were get, able to get harry out of there and he's okay but then we see as vivian's looking like there's um some energy there and it's like oh we got what we're, I was like oh they must have gotten half of I was like they must there must have been because part of the transfer went through so I was like they must have gotten some of Harry's ability so it might be like he might be a little weaker than he was before I was like oh man that kind of sucks but it's like I think because because my immediate thought was they don't know that that's Harry I mean I guess because Nadia is the one that introduced uh quote unquote Jimmy to Vivian but I guess it's like he served a purpose so I, I don't, they probably don't know but I mean who because dark lighters are such an unknown thing to everyone except because that's only something everyone learned about this season so like that's why i'm like would they even know like there's a dark lighter and a white lighter they probably wouldn't know that jimmy has like a twin or whatever you know uh but nevertheless because that's why i'm thinking like 
Nadia set that up because it's like, oh, I because Jimmy was always going to be a, a means to an end. He was always going to be like, oh, it's because they white layers have a very unique ability only to them. So it's like they're going after everyone that's every like creature that's unique. So they probably want to capture white lighter ability specifically. I mean, obviously it applies to dark lighters too, but more so white lighter. So so that does beg the question, did they know that he was a white lighter? Did they actually figure out the whole Jimmy situation that is actually Harry or I'm curious about that, or was it didn't matter? I'm surprised, like, especially because Nadia and him were having that relationship. But maybe Nadia was thinking like, "Oh, he'd never know," or maybe they did find out it was Harry, and they're like, "Oh, she's like, what happened to Jimmy?" And it's like, maybe it's that. Whatever the case may be, that that's something I probably not that big enough deal to get answered, but it's just something that was kind of crossing my mind with the whole situation. Uh, but uh, yeah, and I love like obviously there's the thing between. Uh, you know, uh, Jordan and, uh, Maggie. And I love the whole thing of her being like, yeah, sorry to kind of keep putting your life in danger and stuff like that. He's like, you know, and the whole, like asking you to kiss Vivian and stuff like that. He's like, literally after all the dangerous stuff I've done, almost dying and stuff like that, kiss, being asked to kiss Vivian is literally the least on the, the, the level of everything, you know? So, but obviously it's like, she had heard Jordan talk to Vivian about some of his plans for the future. And I think, you know, cause for Maggie, it's like so much, like not just her, literally everyone in this, her and her sisters all had to put their lives entirely on hold uh, because of all of this. And it's like, for her, it's like, but even when the time comes, even when normal normalcy comes back around, eventually there's always gonna be another crisis. But Jordan kind of points out the fact is, yeah, but crises are only temporary. And eventually you can get back to some form of normal life and kind of figure out, you know, where you wanna go and what you wanna do. And I'm curious to see what life is gonna look like after that, like, you know? Once again, that's always an amazing aspect about well, this original show and this is always that, you know, out of anyone balancing a normal life, it's the hardest as a charm was you have such a big responsibility because you're kind of like the centerfold of all things good so it's like so many people in the supernatural world just the world in general like you represent so much on the side of good so you you have a responsibility but at the same time you're people too you want to live your own lives you know so all that is always an interesting balancing act you know once again that's always that was always kind of like an interesting struggle in the original show was balancing the two like it's happened to a degree in this yeah it's called similar relationships people that care about and stuff like that but obviously like obviously when, as the show went on in the original it became more and more of a thing of them wanting some form of normalcy especially like especially when piper had leo and eventually not leo but um wyatt and chris uh, well, why then eventually, Chris? But once again, tangents and all that. But the whole situation did get uh, Mel thinking about because she's like, oh, Abigail packed up all her stuff. It's like for her, it's like I almost thought like, you know, spending time with us was actually going to do some good and she might kind of sway to our side. But it's like I'm interested to see where she went because she's probably like, I can't be around you goody two shoes. But also she's not trying, I guess, being around Harry because things didn't kind of work out in that regard. But it's like you guys are just trying to get me to do too much good. It's like, ah, this witch stuff is fine. But it's just like I got I think from uh, Abigail it's probably going to be about finding her own path, kind of like not necessarily with the demons, maybe not even with the witches, kind of finding her own you know middle path it'll be interesting to see if that ends up being the case but then we finally have that thing between you know uh macy and um harry and he wakes up and everything and she's able to kind of you know be frank about everything she's like because the fact is she's always put up these walls that's how she's protected herself by kind of keeping people at a distance like everything you know has always been a defense mechanism and she's basically tried to push down how she's felt about harry because it's like she's always kind of you know put up walls to kind of make it so she only had to rely on herself because, you know, people you could end up hurting you and stuff like that. So she didn't want to be hurt. Like I said, all defense mechanism. And, but Harry, she couldn't bury like how Harry made her feel anymore. And he kept being about ready to say something. I'm like, what are you about to say? I was like, please don't tell me something like you decided you're going to choose Abigail or something. I was like, what, what are you going to say, Harry? And he's like, oh, that's all lovely. I was like, that doesn't sound good. And he was like, but who are you again? And I'm like, I was like, no, she literally poured her heart out to you and you don't remember her or anything. So my thought immediately is like, okay, so it must be that when they pulled out his white lighter side, like it must have done something to his memory because I guess, because the thing is, he might not even be like fully hairy right now. He might be more like my thing is them pulling out all that magic. Like maybe they didn't get, maybe they got most of the, if not all of his magic. So he might just be a regular human right now. He might not be a white lighter. So maybe upon losing all that made him a white lighter because 
because when you become a white, when they make you a white lighter, they wiped away all your memories and stuff like that. So he doesn't remember who he was originally. So maybe he's maybe he's not Harry anymore. Maybe he's not Harry with amnesia. Maybe he's actually Jimmy, like who he originally was. You know, maybe that's what that is. Or maybe it is just, oh, he lost part of his memory. Because either way, I think it's, it's got to be tied because, like, your memories as a, your, your white lighter memories are, t like, separate from, like, your human memories. So that could be something like, once upon losing his powers, he got all his human memories back. But everything he experienced and what he knows as a white lighter is completely gone. Or maybe it's just a byproduct of just, in general, what happened to him. It kind of messed with his brain. I don't know. It could go either way. But that's a complicated situation to be in right now to be fair there is uh the other harry dark lighter harry so maybe the fusing of those two well that's always the big thing of like well if we combine these two like what would end up happening it's like maybe dark uh maybe uh jimmy uh dark lighter jimmy will be of some use in getting i don't know but also once again what is vivian's plan to do with um the white lighter ability might be the key to it because of ability to heal and stuff like that. So it might be a thing where it's like it might be the ability you can use to um, maybe stabilize it so that humans can get the magic transfer without there being issue. Maybe like it's kind of like the missing piece to the formula or maybe they just want to give someone the ability to heal and teleport and stuff like that. Maybe that's what Julian wants. It's like the fact is his sister wasn't saved by someone with disability and he's like, I won't let that happen again. I'm going to use his mat. Like maybe that, like I said, it depends on who wants what. It seems like I think what they're setting up is the fact is it seems like Julian has an altruistic point of what he wants to do with this. And it seems like Vivian is the one that wants to go about it in a more monetary sense. Once again, getting investors and pulled in of like, oh, showcasing everything. That's I mean, they're going to be selling magic. Like, oh, you want magical abilities? It's kind of like in Misfits. There's the dude, what's his name? Seth. He basically gives out abilities and switches abilities and stuff like that in Misfits. I think it's going to be kind of a similar thing in that regard of like, oh, you want magical powers? Yeah, that's going to be what million dollars to give you specific abilities and stuff like that so and obviously that's going to mean the destruction of the magical world the balance of it all like it's definitely going to be interesting to see where all this ultimately ends up taking us going forward into the next episode but really that's all i want to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe love life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye